This episode of the Western Outdoor News podcast is brought to you by the Western Outdoor News digital subscription. If you'd like to read Western Outdoor News weekly on your iPad or your PC, all you have to do is visit wonews.com, sign up for a digital subscription, and a show special, I'll give you $5 off. All you have to do is type in promo code 5 off one that's F-I-V-O-F-F-W-O-N, and you'll receive $5 off your one-year digital-only subscription, making it less than $20 for the year of Western Outdoor News. So what are you waiting for? Visit wonews.com to claim this deal. Just when I think it's safe to take a, a deep breath, a sigh of relief, it's like something else is coming up over the horizon. And we have to, as as boat owners and as part of the Sport Fishing Association, um, we have to keep our eyes past the horizon and anticipate what that next issue is. We do not get to sit back and relax. Welcome back to another week of the Western Outdoor News Podcast. On today's show, we have a conversation with Jamie Diamond. Jamie is the owner of Stardust Sport Fishing in Santa Barbara, and she recently wrote an editorial piece shedding light on the flawed science being used by CARB that could doom California's passenger sport fishing fleet. You don't know what CARB is, and this is the first time you're hearing about it? Well, don't worry. Jamie breaks it down for me later in the show in a way that's so easy to understand, you will be a CARB expert by the end of the conversation. But it's not all doom and gloom. She also previews the season to come and talks about some of the upgrades happening to her landing in Santa Barbara. But first, let's talk about news across the whole West Coast here in this week's report wrap-up. So let's start on the Central Coast. It's time for Big Halibut with Bounce Ball Tactics producing numerous doormat size halibut like the impressive duo seen on this week's cover taken just off Morro Bay by Central Coast Outfitters. These guys have been on a hot streak lately. They are pulling out giant halibut out of Morro Bay. A record-shaking white sea bass weighing in at nearly 80 pounds was caught off of San Francisco by Eric Nakamura on a live anchovy, and he was tar- he was actually targeting halibut, ended up with a nearly 80-pound white sea bass. Not a bad day. The High Sierra Lakes have been producing big Mackinac trout with a 20-pound male falling to a live minnow for a Tahoe sport fishing guide on his day off. Big Mackinac trout out of the High Sierra Lakes. Big Bear Lake is producing some big rainbow trout, including an 8-pounder. And the hot bait right now in Big Bear is a Berkeley Power Egg Bait. That seems to be getting the big ones. With the ice melting on the warmer mornings, it's a great time to score a Big Bear Lake trophy. We also have reports on the steady trout bite from numerous other lakes up and down the coast in Western Outdoor News. One of the most surprising catches of this week is the capture of a steelhead from a Central Coast beach, San Luis Obispo, to a surf perch angler. The elusive game fish took a shrimp bait and fought for about 10 minutes before a quick photo and release. The California Outdoors Hall of Fame has inducted two new members with Bill Sims, host of the Outdoor Show radio show, and Bill Jennings from the California Sport Fishing Protection Alliance receiving top honors. Saltwater bass fans will appreciate the bait info in this week's weekly tips with some great advice on how to get those bay or sand bass biting when the water is below 60 degrees. So it's a good time to check that out. That is the five on five. That's the five tips on page five of Western Outdoor News. Hunting fans will also be interested to learn about choosing the correct caliber for coyote. Plus, we get to hear what a Moses stick is and how useful they are while you're in the field. For more on these stories, plus all the usual fish counts, tips, features, private boater reports, form charts, everything you need every single week, you can head over to wonews.com or check out your local newsstand or your mailbox. 
So let's get to our main guest today. Again, that's Jamie Diamond. She is the owner of Stardust Sport Fishing in Santa Barbara. She recently wrote an editorial piece for Western Outdoor News titled, Flawed Science Could Doom California's Passenger Sport Fishing Fleet. It's definitely worth a read, but hear it straight from Jamie herself right here on the show. CARB stands for California Air Resources Board, um, and they manage everything from your car to, uh, to, to our boats, off-road vehicles, trucks, all the, all the things that, that spit out emissions. So in this instance, I'm going to use this analogy that I, that I used in, um, in my editorial. Imagine if the state ruled that your hot water heater is no longer environmentally compliant and it has to be removed. Okay. But then they say you have to use this new type of hot water heater and it has all this extra equipment with it. And it's actually going to take about 500 square feet of your home and it's probably not going to (laughs) fit. By the way, uh, it runs really hot. So if your home is made, has any wood in it or, or drywall, you got to scrap the house and build a new one out of steel. Wow. That would never fly. Expensive? Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, and that would never fly. that's essentially what's happening. Oh, um, or that's what's being proposed, I should say. Yes. Okay, so that's that's essentially what's going on here with, uh, with the sport fishing fleet. So can you take the analogy now and apply it to your guys' boats, the Stardust and the Coral Sea? How are you guys uh, directly affected by something like this? Certainly. So um, the new... Uh, proposal, uh, the new rule, proposed rule, it's for tier three or tier four engines, plus something called the DPF, diesel particulate filter. And that is about an eight foot by eight foot by eight foot box that has to sit on the back deck of the boat above and behind your engine. Um, It has a ceramic filter that clogs frequently when at idle. And if it doesn't shut down properly, it gets very, very hot, causes lots of pressure, and can go boom. And if you are in the the, the San Pedro, LA, Long Beach port area, um, where there's many, many trucks um, hauling cargo, uh, if you've seen one of those those trucks pulled over the side of the road smoking or on fire, uh, it's from the similar system. Um, and so they have acknowledged, CARB has acknowledged that wood and fiberglass boats will have to be scrapped because this equipment runs too hot. Um, and the, the only option really is a steel vessel. Um, so we would have to build new, larger, they all would have to be at least about 90 feet steel vessels, um, to house this equipment because not only is it not safe for use in our size vessel, in our uh, type of vessels, but also they don't make it small enough to fit in our vessels either. So it doesn't exist yet for our size vessel. Even if the Stardust or the Coral Sea were made out of steel in their exact dimensions, it still wouldn't fit because they don't have an engine under 800 horsepower with this system available. It doesn't exist yet. Jeez. So they're, they're asking a lot of you guys. So what, what have they offered in return so far? I mean, they not, can't. They, not they, much. I, <laughs> um, so they've stated that uh, depending on your current engine tier, you have a certain amount of time to comply. So if you're zero, tier zero or tier one, um, then you have to comply by next year, by 2023. Wow. Uh, tier two gets a couple more years to comply. And then tier three uh, doesn't have to comply until I believe it's 2030. Um, we right now just repowered the Stardust with a tier three, uh, engine and generator. So this year, if you're riding on the Stardust, you're going to hear a new sound, <laughs> uh, new purr. Um, the, the Coral Sea is currently a tier two and we already had planned on upgrading it to a tier three next year during our haul out. Um, that was already in the works. So, uh, that will buy us some time. And we're really hoping that um, that the work that SAC, the Sport Fishing Association of California, I'm on the board of directors for, um, we've been working really hard to 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 deal with this CARB issue, to talk with uh, with their staff, with their board of commissioners, 
engaging a lot of data, getting a lot of data, um, working with environmental engineers, environmental uh, and mathematicians. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it, it's so complex that um, it, I mean, and we need to get these people that have this amazing level of intelligence and ability to decipher the data that CARB has used. Um, nobody, I could never have dug through the data that they have to understand what it is. Um, I mean, so really the odds were stacked against us from the beginning, but I believe they underestimated us. Mm -hmm. uh, so you talk about the, the data. So let's get to that. So CARB, you say it right here in your editorial, CARB is using flawed data. And not only are they using it, they've acknowledged that it's flawed. Can you talk about some of that, uh, that flawed data? Certainly. So some, uh, So they have used AIS data um, from vessels to show they, 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 they used several vessels and extrapolated what the whole fleet must be doing based off of several vessels that have AIS, not taking into account the fact that just because AIS is on does not mean that the engine is on or running. It just means that's where the vessel is. Um, also, it doesn't take into account all the vessels that don't have AIS and that go outside, do a straight shot outside of state waters or go into Mexican waters. Um, it doesn't take into account time on the anchor with the engines off. Uh, you know, it it's very flawed. Um, and we, from the beginning, have stated, use the, the Department of Fish and Wildlife logbook data. It shows the exact blocks we're fishing in. And we have to check a box that says if we're trolling, drifting, or on anchor. And so um, that would be far more accurate than what they're using. And they have repeatedly said, well, this is what we have. This, they're, they're, they use our favorite phrase, uh, best available science. Oh. We, <laughs> yeah, our, yeah, we hear that a lot with fisheries management uh, it's, it's our, our least favorite phrase. Cause it typically means we acknowledge that this actually isn't the best, but it's the best available. Um, which in this case isn't even true because there is something better, but they are refusing to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Sounds like a, a cop out. <laughs> yep. Definitely. So there's kind of been a theme of this podcast uh, since we've started is that it, it it seems to be a battle to be an angler or even a, a you know a sport fishing organization in California. W would you agree with that <laughs> that it always just seems like there's there's always another hurdle for uh for fishermen and for the sport fishers to actually operate in California. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh you know, just when I think it's safe to take a a deep breath, a sigh of relief. It's like something else is coming up over the horizon. And, um, and we have to, as, as boat owners and as part of the sport fishing association, um, we have to keep our eyes past the horizon and anticipate what that next issue is. We do not get to sit back and, and relax and unfortunately enjoy what we have because we are constantly fighting, um, different government agencies um, and we, you know, every year there's a new agency that says, oh, we need you to pay for this permit so we can verify that you have this, even though that other organization already verified that, you know, there's a lot of double dipping. There's a lot of, um, and we have fisheries management, we have coast guard, uh, we have carb redundant enforcement almost. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. it, so this this should not be confused that the sport boat industry doesn't care about the environment, right? Absolutely not. Like I said, um, the Stardust is currently upgrading to tier three. The Coral Sea, we had a long in the works plan to be t upgrading next year in 23 to tier three. Um, can you explain fact, what that actually means? Yeah. So, so engines over time, are built with just with te newer technology, better filtering, um, the, reducing emissions, just like on vehicles um, from the 80s to now, the the technology to reduce emissions on vehicles has lessened significantly over, over the years. Or I mean, the technology has grown, the emissions have lessened. And the same thing goes with new engines. And so tier zero and means there is there it was built in a time where there were no emissions regulations 
Okay. Okay. Tier three is the best available. <laughs> There's no <laughs> phrase, but it is truly currently the best available under 800 horsepower for our vessels. Um, and so that's what we're putting in. Um, and, and as far as the environment as a whole, not just air emissions, uh, we have done so much as an industry to really, um, to really, I mean, we're stewards of the ocean. This is our livelihood. We have to keep it healthy, whether it be fisheries management or the Stardust. Um, years ago, it was the first sport boat to have a, a line recycling bin on board oh, to wow. put your mono in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we started that years ago, dec- gosh, early 2000s. Um, and so we're constantly doing things. Almost all the trash on our boats is recyclable. Um, you know, we're, we're very conscientious about what we're doing, what we're, what we're putting in the water, what's, what we're leaving behind, um, and what making sure we don't leave anything behind when we're out there. Um, the use of descending devices to keep the stocks healthy. Um, there's so many different components and, and that's, that's part of the job for us. Mm Mm-hmm. It, so the other side of this, that's part of the job for you guys. If CARB has their way, what does this mean for your customers and the people that are, are going fishing on your boats? So um, it's uh, a little doom and gloomy, um, for <laughs> sure, much like the title of the editorial. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are going to be a lot of boats that have to get phased out, um, and that will result in, in loss of businesses. Businesses will shut down. Um, If we have to build all new steel vessels for the entire fleet, almost 200 boats, um, there's only so many places that can build steel vessels and they can only pump out so many a year. It would be decades before the entire fleet could be rebuilt according to what CARB wants us to do right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's why... Uh, myself and others, other boat owners, landing owners, and SAC are working so hard is to ensure that that doesn't happen um, and that we find a reasonable path forward. So it's not that we don't want to reduce emissions. We're just saying there's a better way to do it. And and there's a way that that we can do it without putting all these businesses out of business, all, all these companies out of business. Um, and so we're, we're, we're saying original, our original ask is, and, and we're still asking this is, uh, put us back in the category with commercial fishing vessels, which is what we previously were classified as carb removed us from that classification and said, well, because you take passengers, you can just charge more. Oh, geez. Um, but that doesn't really work. You can't just charge infinitely more <laughs> for a ticket. People <laughs> won't come. Um, yeah. a new vessel is, is estimated between four and $5 million. Jeez. And the price of a ticket, they, the, by CARB's estimate, they said, oh, you just raised the, the ticket price $40 a person. Well, that, I can tell you right now, that's not going to cut it. No. <laughs> um, a half-day not. ticket is is going to cost easily you know, 250 to $300. Yeah. I mean, that um, won't cut it for you guys, no. and that also won't, won't cut it for your customers as well. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We will, we will have priced ourselves right out of a business. Um, mm. So then what was the point of doing it in the first place? Right. Yeah. Jeez. It's, it's a, it's a very, I mean, like I said, it, the, the future um, looking as if car, if, if this went through, it's, it's scary. Um, mm. And so we're working really hard to figure that out. We, there's a whole nother next generation of equipment um, which is zero emissions that the state ultimately wants us to get to. And one of the points we've brought up is, well, if that's what the end goal is, why would you have us go through all this now, just in this in between, instead of working towards that end goal? Yeah, right? it almost seems like it's just trying to hold it over until until the next big hurdle that you guys have exactly. to jump over. And so part of the discussion is, well, how far out is that net zero tech? And if that's the end goal, then why don't we work towards that? Why aren't we putting money towards that instead of this kind of in-between patch, it Mm -hmm. seems like, Um, and and investing all this money and all this equipment that we're then going to have to scrap again to get to this net zero equipment. 
yeah, we're, we're, we could just skip a step essentially. Exactly. Let's skip this, this in between this middle step. Um, it, it's a stutter step. It just, it doesn't belong there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very strange road. The first workshop was March, I believe it was March 5th of 2020, right at the onset of COVID when things were shutting down all over the state and, um, and people were scared and nervous and businesses were having to close. And then they say, Oh, by the way, we're going to do this. And, and they never had any in-person workshops. They haven't had a single in-person workshop. Wow. Um, it's all been zoom. Um, and we only found out about it because someone else told us about it. They did not do any outreach to let to let our organization or um, our businesses know that this is what was was in the works. Wow! Somebody else happened to send me an email and and Ken Frankie at SAC saying, "Hey, there's this workshop I noticed about carb talking about commercial harbor craft. You may want to check in on it." And it was like in two days. And we jumped on it and were absolutely floored by what was, what they were doing. Um, that, their, their ability to reach out, uh, they have all of our contact information because all, through the commercial Harbor craft regulations, all of our vessels are registered through them. They, they know that they can get all of our information from the department of fish and wildlife. Um, there's so many different ways they could have gotten a hold of the commercial Harbor craft. Uh, CPFVs, commercial passenger fishing vessels, and they didn't. Wow, maybe they sent out a letter with carrier pigeon because those are zero. <laughs> those are zero emissions, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. One would think. I don't know Gosh. what they thought, what they were thinking. Um, it, a lot of times, it seems like they aren't, and or maybe they are, but they really just don't care. That's what it seems like. So I'm sure everybody listening to this, their blood is probably boiling and they're thinking, you know, what can I do to to stop this and how can I keep updated with uh, with what's going on here? So let's let's first talk about the next meeting. It's uh, it's probably going to happen in late March. But what can people listening to this do to uh, to make their voices heard? So, yeah, they, they have not released the actual date, but they've said spring, March, most likely. Um, the first thing to do is go to savefishing.com and, uh, and it, it, it summarizes what's going on and there's a button that says, take action, click on that. Um, you can sign our petition. Uh, we have over 21,000 anglers that have already signed our petition and we've presented that to the governor and we've presented that to the carb commissioners, but continue to sign up for that if you haven't already. Um, and then the next step is write your legislators, your assembly members, uh, your, your, your senators, your congressmen, uh, your, your board of supervisors, your harbors, um, and, and the governor, and the, and then also send your comments to the California air resources board commissioners. Um, let them know that you're not okay with this. Let them know that, that, that they need to wait and take their time and not rush this. Um, the fact that they've rushed this through during a pandemic alone um, is just awful, but yeah, it's mind boggling. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's obvious that this is part of uh, governor Newsom's uh, net zero goal, obviously. Um, but and, you know, say, hey, listen to the Sport Fishing Association of California, listen to the to the owners and and they want to work with you, but you have to work back with them. And and part of the problem is they haven't been responding um, with with changes showing that they're listening. And, and so we really need to put legislative pressure, political pressure on um, on CARB staff and the commission. Wow. Okay. Well, it, let's let's not let up on any of that pressure. And if we can use all of our voices to uh, uh, to prevent this, it it will go a really long way in in saving saving fishing, like it says. So uh, let's let's shift gears to maybe a little bit more positive uh, note. <laughs> um, so 
carb is it is what it is and we're going to uh we're going to keep the pressure on like i said but let's let's jump to this season so uh, of course rockfish opener is coming it's it's crazy it's right around the bend here oh man um, it's sneaking up <laughs> on us for sure it is do you guys have anything uh, huge planned with uh with stardust and coral sea so we're, I mean, we're running three quarter day every day, March 1st. Um, the Stardust starting the second week of March will have its Wednesday half day trips every Wednesday. But um, other than that, both boats are three quarter day. They leave at seven. They get back around five in the afternoon. Plan A is always to head out to Santa Rosa Island, weather permitting. And and we plan on just really, uh, really getting you guys on those fish. The crew have been working hard all, all month all this month and they're going to be working hard next month. Like I said, we're repowering the stardust. The coral sea crew just got finished painting the bait tank and the engine hatches and doing all kinds of cosmetic stuff. So you guys can ding it up again with your sinkers. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, they're, they're antsy to get back out there for sure. They, they, these guys don't do well tied to land. So they're excited to get back out there this season. Yeah. So, so that's what's coming up. How would you recap, uh, 2021 for your guys' season? 2021 was great. Um, we had an unusually amazing uh, sheephead year. Um, I think a lot of the listeners probably uh, heard that we had to throttle back on on sheephead towards the end of the season because as a fleet, we approached our, our quota, our allowable catch for the year early. Um, and that has really never happened before. Um, and so it was, it was very unusual. Uh, we had great white sea bass fishing. Um, the rockfish was just off the charts. Awesome. Like, like always, we're really blessed to be where we are and do what we do here out of the, out of the Santa Barbara channel islands. Um, the, the fishing, you know, the quality and the quantity is there. Uh, the ling cod, um, didn't quite perform this year as, as it had in previous years. And what we found is they were really, really deep. Um, and when we found them, they were stuffed already and oh, we wow. did catch them. So it was, I, I don't, I think it was a combination of, uh, abundance of, of food and they just really sought some deeper water this last year. Um, so they weren't in their usual zones. The white fish went crazy. We had a lot of 20 fish limit days with, including white fish in the bags, some huge cabazon all year long. Um, it, it really was a fantastic year for us. And we, uh, we're kicking off this year with, with some exciting news. Uh, we are now one of the four partners that own the new Santa Barbara landing. It was previously sea landing and we just took over ownership. Um, like I said, we're one of four partners and wow, congratulations. Uh, thank you. So very exciting. I'm actually sitting in my office right now, looking out the window and, uh, it's, it's pretty surreal. We've been here for so long and this has definitely been part of the dream and we feel very blessed to be able to, to do this. So we, we have some big stuff in the works for the landing. Um, we've already s- just filled the shop with tackle. Um, so whether you're, you're fishing from a boat, from the pier, from, from the beach, we got you. Um, <laughs> And, and we have a renovation coming up uh, next year, hopefully. We're going to bring in a coffee shop. We just want, want you to be able to enjoy yourself when you're in Santa Barbara, whether or not you're coming out on the boats. Wow. You guys have your work cut out for you. You're updating a lot. <laughs> we are. We are. We're really, we're, we're moving forward. Like we're going to be able to move forward. Um, we need, we're just full steam ahead and uh, we have to plan for the future because if you live in, 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 just think about all the the things we're up against and plan according to maybe those happening, then then everything stops. So whether it's fisheries management or Coast Guard or CARB, um, we move forward doing what we do and with, with our eyes on the future constantly. That's, that's the only way we can do it. Wow. Yeah. Hey, on, on that note, how can people book a trip with you guys? Where should we go to, to book a trip? Yeah, head on over to stardustsportfishing.com. So if you're looking for co- Coral Sea or Stardust, go to stardustsportfishing.com. Click the orange book online button at the top of the page. Or you can call Santa Barbara Landing at 805-963-3564. That's 805-963-3564.
All right. And you guys, I'm sure everybody's going to look forward to chipping your new paint job with their sinkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's, that means you had a, you caught a lot of fish, right? You had to reel it back in, drop them, cast them back. At, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's what happens. It's part of doing business. It's, it's part, part of, of doing the... business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. And uh, well, of course, we're going to keep our ears to the ground for uh, for CARB and, and what the future holds there. And we're going to be looking for your guys' reports after the Rockfish opener. Thanks, Brad. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks again to Jamie Diamond from Stardust Sport Fishing for breaking down the entire carb debacle for us. If you wanted to read her article, it's titled Flawed Science Could Doom California's Passenger Sport Fishing Fleet. It's available at wonews.com. And while you're there, check out some of our subscription specials and our upcoming charters and events. We have a huge year planned for Western Outdoor News, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. So head over to wonews.com, and we'll see you out there fishing. Thank you.